What's going on, miners? I'm Chump Change XD, and in today's video, we're going to try to do some DIY to the Jazz Miner X41U. Now, this is going to be a complete custom rip apart and rebuild. I want to see if I can get this heat sink on top of all of these GPU dies or machine dies that are inside this thing cool with 120 millimeter fans. Now there's going to be four of them in a square pattern basically, and we're going to have to rip out all of the server fans that are inside this unit that it pull in the air and spit out the air. It's super high pitched, super annoying, and I don't want to get a divorce over it. So I need to fix this thing. Let's do it. All right. So this is moments before we decide to do the complete transformation and get those server fans out of this unit. But first we need to take it all apart. And I wanted to show you guys the thin fans that I just picked up. These are the P12 Slim from Arctic. And then we have the normal Arctic fans there that we got from a AAA wave actually. So let's get into this thing. Let's start ripping it apart. So this is what we came up with. As you can see, completely disassembled and I put a custom top on it just for now. This is literally just a piece of uh, like wood paneling with the four fans. I let this run throughout the entire night. We actually built this together on a live stream. If you guys didn't see that, go check it out. I'll leave a link above. But this thing again is running fantastic. Ran all through the night, 46 to 48 C on the temperatures. Look at this thing. This is the strip that we took out. As you guys already saw, we disassembled this entire unit. Now, what I want to do, okay, so these are the bigger fans. We have 120 millimeter fans right here. These are the standard ones that you get for your uh, mining rigs or PC cases. Then if you look, I got some thin ones. So the idea is to get the top to this actual unit on top and screwed back together on the sides there, but with a section of the top of this unit cut out for the fans but i would like to get it laser etched with my logo or something right over the four fans so it would pull through it like a fan grate i think it would be pretty neat but for right now my plan is to take some sheet metal i'm going to try to flatten this out and i'm going to cut a square and try to bend over the sides drill some holes so i can actually screw a flat top over this with these fans secured down inside or on top of the unit so they won't fall off but for one i'm super excited that this thing's really quiet it just makes all the difference now we just need to improve the design so let's do it so you can see i have a square marked out here on the ground and i flattened out that sheet metal now this right here i did not trace only because that wasn't perfectly square if you guys remember from the live stream so i took this and i put it in the center here and I marked one side. Then I measured right here how high the lip was on the side and it's 3 eighths of an inch down on this side as well, 3 eighths of an inch. So I added 3 quarters of an inch to one side and I just kind of slid this over, marked straight up. And then this side right here also has a uh, tab that I'm gonna have to notch out like this, but the opposite side has nothing. So I only added an extra 3 eighths of an inch this way, front to back. Now what I need to do is take a razor knife and a straight edge and cut or just make a couple grooves like slices down the sides so it's not tin snipped like scissors because it will come up like uh, like that kind of frilly and not look so perfect. It'll be like kind of kinked and stuff. So I want to just razor knife it across and then I'll have to bend it and snap it. So give me a minute. Let me do all that and I'll be right back. All right, so as you can see right here, I just laid the top of the jazz miner on top of this um, sheet metal that I just cut with the knife, right? So what we're going to do is basically draw a line where I need to crease this because obviously I need to bend that down, I need to bend that down or up, doesn't really matter. And then I need to cut the corner here, just a little notch so I can do the same thing here, fold it up or down. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so ignore the double line, but you can see I notched out the corners there. Now this is the part that's gonna fold up and the right and the left side are also going to fold up. It actually is going to replicate this exactly for the most part. All right guys, check it out. Look at this thing. I made a custom lid and it fits fantastic i actually put a small fan in there just to see how it was like it was meant to be look at that cut perfectly all the way across i actually ended up using my sander which is right here and i cleaned up all around the edges 
all the way around and this thing is phenomenal now what i need to do obviously is get this back on here perfect i need to get the template that i had from the live stream this guy right here and i want to lay this on top i'm going to mark the square because that's where the heat sink is and then i'm going to drill one two three four holes with the hole saw that i have ready to go right here and we're going to pop them right through so the fans can breathe let's do it nice tic-tac-toe pattern so you can see the hole saw is going to cut in right here. Let me know what you guys think about that. I think it's going to uh, work perfect. All right, I'm going to set this on a block of wood. I'm going to pop all the holes, and then we're going to flip this over and drill it down. I think that would be the easiest way to do it. How amazing is that? Got four holes in the top. These were a pain in the ass to cut, by the way. And then I had to uh, lay it against something flat and just hammer it so the edges weren't too sharp. And uh, I actually ended up drilling all of the holes around so we can try to screw this cover down. But what I wanted to show you guys inside of this unit before I started it up, I ended up screwing right through the fans into the heatsink. This is actually tight enough together where the threads will actually catch. You could just literally make your own threads right into it. Got the fan wires all plugged in right here. Everything's kind of wrapped right in this little groove. And we're ready to turn this thing on, so let's do it. Spinning away. All right, let me get the lid on. I'll wait for this thing to register. All right, so this is all well and good, right? Thing registered in the software, and then it ended up shutting down because it overheated. <laughs> so I cooled it off, got it running again, and I was trying to figure out why it overheated. Once it was, you know, cooled down, started up, fault light came on here. I went back into the miner, and I looked, and it said that there was a fan error. These fans, as you can tell, they're not spinning at full speed. And right now it's registering inside the software that fan two is like over 3000 and fan one is like 200. So obviously something's going on. That's not going to keep this thing cool as fast as they're spinning. I mean, you can still see the logo. It doesn't look like a solid circle. So it's definitely not running fast enough. So a day later and a whole bunch of aggravation. This is how I have it running. This is the thicker of the two fans. Now what I found interesting was the fact that these skinny fans wouldn't get to top potential now i think it's the pst if i'm not mistaken that is wired differently internally inside this fan because i had these fans or have these fans hooked up the same way i had the thinner ones hooked up which theoretically means they should be working all the same but because these don't have the PST or whatever that is, it's like a pass-through basically to feed the other fans and it basically communicates with everything to stay around the same uh, RPM or whatever, I guess. That is the issue here. So instead of deciding to cut this square open and ruin all of my hard work drilling those four holes along with my hole saw that's now smoked over there, I um, just bought some new Noctua fans. And look what just arrived. PWM Noctua fans. Super excited. All right, now we should be able to put the thin fans in and get this thing fully secured. Let's do it. And as expected, working fantastic. Even though the colors are absolutely disgusting, these fans are great. They're running full speed. This thing's been up all night. Let's go check it out in the computer, and we're going to call this a win. All right, so here we are on the PC looking at the results. 15 hours later, this thing's been running all through the night. We have a hash rate of 651 at this current moment. The average hash rate is 572 which is amazing then we have the temperature down at the bottom if you guys could see 46 to 49 that's awesome so that's celsius this was actually around 58 if i'm not mistaken when it comes to the original server fans then you look down at the bottom the fan speeds are actually registering correctly we have 1470 and 1650 so there's no errors which is amazing and then on top of it no rejected chairs everything's been accepted i mean this thing's been running smooth as hell so i'm excited so what'd you guys think of this DIY jazz miner? Honestly, I'm amazed by it because typically I'd be able to hear it right now running next to me and I can't hear a damn thing. That wine had to go super happy this worked. And by the way, you guys do not need a custom cover. If you want to do this at home, if you have one of these units, take the lid off, take out the server fans, plug in your own fans, screw them to the heat sink, call it a day. Works perfectly fine without the lid, so you don't have to go crazy DIYing. I just did that for looks, and obviously, I don't want my kids to put their hands inside this machine. If they hit the fan, whatever, it's just not the board and all the controls and stuff. That's the real important stuff that I'm trying to make sure 
doesn't get anything dropped on it. I will be putting some grates over the fans at a later date and painting this cover. I just don't have time to do that right now. It's way too much work, but either way, I'm pumped this works. 257 watts at the wall fed with 240. You might get like an extra 10 watts when it's fed with 120, but is what it is. This is a win for me. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Please don't forget, hit that subscribe button. And if you like DIY content, go over here and check out this video and I'll catch you guys real soon. Peace out.